In this video we will see stress and strain tensile. So here if you see this is a stress element. So for all the planes we have to define like a cube and now there are three direction x, y and z. So here if you see in x direction you have stress x x in y direction you have normal stress y y and in z direction normal strain z z z which are perpendicular to the plane and there are six other forces which are generating shear stresses in six different directions so here in x direction if you see tau x z and y it is tau x y so here for, there are two notation x x means first uh, alphabet is phase and second is direction so phase this this phase is called as an x phase this is y phase the this one on the z axis is z phase so uh, like here tau x y means first x is phase and then y is a y direction upward here first x is direct uh, x is the phase in uh, in x direction and the second one is z direction so uh, in x direction it's an x phase that's why x and the second is the direction of this stress similarly there are two uh, shear stresses in this plane and two shear stresses in this plane so there are total nine forces which are acting and we have to define stress tensor like this so first we define x phase and x y z direction then y phase and then z phase so in uh, diagonal we define normal stresses and on uh, other six phases we define shear stresses so here tau x y and tau y x both are there so th this both will be equal because both are complementary so to body to remain in static position this bo both are to be in complementary direction so one force uh, one stress is acting in this direction other has to act in this direction so likewise all all are having complementary complementary shear stresses so this two will be equal and this two will be equal so like that we are having six different uh, values in 2d it uh, remains like x and y direction so normal x normal y and shear uh, on x y uh, and y x planes so this is 2d representation this is 3d representation so this is called as a stress uh, tensor now if you define as a strain tensor then similarly to this we have to define but here just a shear shear uh, strain has to be divided by 2 so all other parameters are uh, same just a normal stress to normal strain and shear stress to shear strain divided by 2 so this is how we have to define strain tensor now we'll define some terms where first is volumetric term volumetric strain so here in volumetric strain if you see strain is change in length upon original length but for volumetric it is change in volume upon volume or volume or original volume and if we calculate it then it is uh, strain in x y and z direction uh, and is the summation of that so if change in length uh, divided by length change in breadth divided by breadth plus change in height divided by height so that is how we can calculate volumetric strain for cylinder if you see change in length upon length plus diameter is in both the direction to two times delta d by d change in diameter upon diameter so we can write uh, strain in length plus strain in diameter into two here in sphere all three direction are same so three times the change in diameter upon diameter so three times epsilon d which is uh, strain in which is strain in diameter diameter so that is for sphere and cylinder now if we see relation between some elastic constant then e is equal to 2g into 1 plus mu equal to 3k into 1 minus 2 mu here e is young modulus g is modulus of rigidity and k is bulk modulus mu is a poison ratio and if you see poison ratio is lateral strain upon normal strain so here delta d by d upon delta l by l minus sign is because when length increases diameter decreases so this value comes out to be negative delta d is final diameter minus initial diameter and delta l is final length upon initial length so negative signs will make mu positive it's minus epsilon y upon epsilon x strain in y direction and strain in x direction similarly it will be equal to strain in z direction upon strain in x direction for cork material mu equal to zero means if you change length there will be no change in diameter so if you change a uh, normal strain 
uh, normal length uh, if you change the length of the object there will be no change in the diameter so so mu will be equal to 0 and um, cork is used in a uh, wine wine bottles and uh, some uh, bottles where uh, it is help uh, where the property is required where if you change compress it its diameter should not change and uh, rubber is um, having mu equal to 0 0.5 so 0 0.5 it's, it, it is called as incompressible because if you if you uh, calculate its volumetric strain then its volume remains constant at mu equal to 0 0.5 now if you see e is equal to stress upon strain here stress is normal stress and normal strain g is equal to shear stress upon shear strain bulk modulus is volumetric strain upon volumetric uh, volumetric stress upon volumetric strain volumetric uh, stress is a uh, pressure in hydrostatic uh, and uh, volumetric strain is delta v by v so this is how we can calculate these three and uh, these are the relations between this elastic constant now if you see these are some important terms like rigidity if you see then axial rigidity is area into e so the rigidity is like how much how much it, uh, it resists the deformation so how much rigid it is uh, and uh, the more the area more will be the rigidity more the young modulus more the rigidity similarly in torsional direction gj and flexure direction ei so it is from flexure means bending so for uh, to uh, have um, more resistance to bending we calculate uh, we calculate rigidity as ei stiffness on the other hand we simply have to divide rigidity by length so per unit length so axial stiffness ka is p divided by delta uh, because uh, force upon uh, change in length is stiffness equal to a e by l because delta l equal to p l by a e we can calculate from that a e by l torsional stiffness equal to t divided by theta equal to g j by l so theta equal to t l by g j so we subject t by theta we get g j by l and for bending or flexure stiffness k equal to p divided by y which is some constant constant times e i by l cube so this is how this constant changes uh, if uh, it is simply supported or cantilever then it will change so that is why it is constant and e i by l cube will define the flexure stiffness so this is for this video and see you in the next video thank you guys